yet another cute little place. Look at that all tucked away inside there. And there's a couple of boats on anchor. But we are going to this awesome little place in there. We are two crazies from South Africa. That is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck everything and now we are living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. There's a little marina. And here's the anchor spot. It's 15 meters deep diesel. Yo, only 15 meters. Right in front of us. We just lifted anchor here and we now on our way to another island. Never knew Italy has so many islands. We, we are saying goodbye for Presida and we are now on our way to the next destination and it is it's a long way to go. You can see here. Um, you can see it is about six o'clock, just after six, so it's not that early. But our next route is going to go all the way to this little island here. Palmarola, Palmarola. And that island, if you look in this, there is Italy. So we're going to go there and after that island, tomorrow we will go to Sardinia. The sun is about to come up. There's a lot of little fishing boats around us. They are now actually in our back. And we've got our fishing lines out. We now revert it back to two hand lines. So they all have a, a lure on at the end and they are around 30 meters to 50 meters at the back of, of Sisu. So we're going to keep it simple. That five lines was just, we put out every day five to six lines and nothing happens. Just listen to that. No engines. And we have the big sail up. I once felt I'm done with the defense. Throw back and climb over your fence. Hide to show, show you that I was a man. your shoulders and closed off that's what i told you soon enough everything started to change because there's no going back no going back there's no going back to your own life no living in the past so we saw this yacht coming already no ais nothing but we could pick it up on the radar and it was saying 11 knots and I'm wondering what is under that tarp on the deck not sure you guys can see that but that is the dinghy <laughs> uh, that one that's the dinghy almost as tall or le long as Sisu Ooh, sorry so we have one, two, three, four. Oh, you guys can see, but there's seven in front of us. So all of them just got popped out of here. And there's seven going that direction, in a northerly direction. And then there was four that went back to, to mainland Italy. But 
we are the last in this queue. It's just not right. So we need to do something to not be the last. So I'm going to raise all the sails that we have. It is now like 120 through wind. It's about 120. So let's see what we can do, what we can get out of Sisu. Those two, they wing on wing. I cannot think that they're going in the same direction because the wind is not going that direction. And then this guy is a cat. And this sail is not really set for beam reach. There goes the Genoa, so maybe the main sail will come as well. And then there in front is a mono. We've got a big D up. As you can see, but we had this up now already for a long time. And now we also got the main up. The thing is with the main, we because of the the swells in our beam, it's not always it's it's heavy on the car, you see, wax. So we need to do something to that one is more or less flying. That one is more or less flying, but not always. And the top one is not flying properly. So it means the twist is not good. So what I'm going to do, you see our topping lift is just hanging slack. I'm going to tighten the topping lift. And by lifting the boom, because we, the topping lift is now going to lift the boom up. By lifting the boom up, we're going to create more twist. And the sail will also not go flapping, flapping like that with the swells. And with my newly great uh, installed clutches, I do have the topping lift right here. So let's, let's get that topping lift a little bit tighter. And then let's see how the twist is moving. You see how it already started to improve? The bottom one is already flying better and the top one is already starting to fly every now and then. I need to release that line a little bit and lift the boom a little bit higher. So let's see, the topping lift is now very tight. You see now the top ones is flying more often than not. So they good, that one is good, that one is good. So the first thing that I did was you need to let the boom out as as far until those ones are start to fly. We don't have that one anymore, but that one started to fly. Then we know the boom is as far out as we need it. Then we just need to get the, the, the twist right. And that we do with the topping lift and the, the sheet line. Now look. We have a problem every now and then, so I cannot just let it out as far as possible because we have the shrouds. So I need to be careful that the shrouds don't break or the battens don't break against the shrouds. So after all that mumbo jumbo, what did we get? So the true wind speed is 9, the parent wind speed is 8, and this is what we're getting. So here's a little bit more information for you guys. So that is a true wind indicator and the orange on that one over there is the apparent wind. So you can see the true wind shifted a little bit, which is the apparent wind. So from say 9 or 10, every now and then there's a little bit of 10 knots, we're getting around 6 knots. 60%. So that cat is still there. I don't see it on AIS. We can already see these ones on our port side. So we are definitely holding ass. Just an update on the race. So that one is already behind us. And that one is now much easier to see below the Cody. I think the catamaran over there is also busy. We're gaining on him. I think that one over there is uh, 
a racing boat or something because he's doing 6.8 knots in 9 knots of wind the cat is doing about 3.6 I got it on the radar that one is AIS doing 3 knots these guys here at our back they were also doing about 3 knots and the guys just below the just below there is also doing around 3.4 knots just a quick update the Bavaria 44 is somewhere there and one of the masks that I saw was actually a mono that was motoring and it was coming our direction so that one is not definitely not part and I'm not sure Ooh. this mono is about to get behind our shrouds so I'm not sure what that is and then oh. this one is a fountain Peugeot 54 foot with a square top and we can now see it's a, it's much closer now to us okay the, the the monoal is just behind the Fountain Bijou. Very beautiful boat, this FP. There you can see the monoal coming out. So the monoal is even also overtaking the, the FP. Doing a nice 6.2 knots. And the Bavaria is right there at the back. Front of Majo there and the other Manol over there. In all fairness, we do have a massive code D that helps us along quite nicely. The sun is yes getting up over Panzola and we were at Palmarola So that was the place and now we are going around the corner here to see what is on the other side and then we will go that direction to Sardinia. Jock Cousteau, the most famous diver in the world, he said this is the most beautiful island in the Mediterranean. So let's see what he was talking about. Unfortunately, we cannot dive, we would love to dive, but Pietro's hand, arm is just not in a condition to do the dive. And it's very treacherous here. This, this one you can see. But there's rocks that's just one meter below sea level, so you have to be very, very careful here. Yeah. But look at these caves. I wonder how you can get... Maybe only when it is very quiet, the wind is coming from the other direction. Okay, that is the little town, population zero apparently, according to Wikipedia. And to avoid the rocks, let's head for our next destination which is 276 degrees so, 
So we are leaving this beautiful setting but as you can see last night when we dropped the anchor it was among rocks it was serious serious rocks I, I was looking for sand patches and I just saw lots of white on us that's cool there's lots of sand <laughs> there's one or two black spots so let's miss the black spots because they could be rocks and it turned out everything was rocks it was white rocks yeah, I think it came all, all this, it's just like disintegrated rocks that's lying down there. And the chain during the night actually wrapped ro around the rocks and the rocks is like, like this edges, so it goes underneath. So you cannot lift it up like that. So it was crazy. Pietro has to steer with one left hand. <laughs> yeah, and obviously I've got, I've got no use of my right hand. I can use it here, but I've got do that with it so it's really just with a left hand forwards backwards wherever I need to go so that's a bit daunting yeah yep we are sailing and we've got 15 knots of true wind and we are doing it at about 50 degrees apparent wind angle It's not jammed, although it goes through the jammer, but the jammer is open. Those are closed, that one is open, that one is open, and that one is open. So our reef lines and the uh, sheet lines are open. So it will be very easy for us just to flip it over and ease it off if we see that we're getting a gust that we cannot handle. On our way to Sardinia, we, we decided to drop the code D because it's not, we do between 10 and 15 knots, but the parent wind goes up to about 80 knots, so it's not good for the code D. And the other thing is, it's this very nasty, shallow, short waves. But yeah, so we've got the main up. And the Genoa. But our fishing lines are still out. And no fish yet. But this is the. It's not high. It's maybe, I think, maybe not even a meter high. But it just caused this nasty up and down. That's just not cool. Look at this one now. You can see all the water there on the deck. Look at how it's going. The swells have picked up a little bit. Still not two meter. But it sure becomes a little bit more nasty now. We are lifting quite high and going down quite far. Peter is cooking here with one hand. <laughs> Look and at that and carry lamb. Whee, it's going to be nice. And this is what's going on outside. <laughs> Up and down. Yeah, it's like. We haven't had this time the sea is more long. Yeah, and we're doing 6.5 knots through the sea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to take with an infrared camera the waves but as you can see you cannot see anything swells are not nice they're nasty 
and I cannot I cannot even show you how Sisu is jumping over the waves I can just show you that I'm holding on and I even got the deck lights on so we're not going super fast but the wind the wind is going up to 15 around the 17 sometimes casting and we are bashing into very short waves I think I need to maybe ha. how's that so I used the infrared to try and capture what's going on outside but it is it's nothing about crazy about like the storms that we experienced before it's just this choppy short waves and they hammering us but we cannot see it with the infrared so people many times ask us to I just need to hold on something people ask us to to um, take video of the waves at night um, and of course at night it always feels much worse than during the day but it is as if the wind is picking up during the night and um, it's shifting a little bit or whatever but it is much more hectic dropped the sails and dropped anchor here in the north of Sardinia a little bay but whilst dropping the sails we frick discovered that one of the bolts on one of the cars came undone or disappeared or fixing frickin' boats in exotic places <laughs> Kanagioni. Okay, we anchored here at Kanagioni, and it's still very hot, so I think there's still a siesta time going on. We've got a few neighbors, a couple of monos in a powerboat, and someone just went there to fill up. Living in the past, we're over there, I'm feeling it tonight, riding on the dizzying heights.
Pietro just made us our second cup of coffee. We are running again for weather, for good weather. Uh, this time of the year, the thunder clouds are almost everywhere. So, look at this big mooring boy here. And then look at our chart. So I'm already at 100 meter zoom level if you look at that. You can see right there in the middle, there is the radar, the, the purple spot. Okay, I zoomed in. And now only, only at this level I can see it. There it disappears and we are on 100 meters. It is amazing. You have to zoom in quite a lot before you see this big ass mooring boy. We, we just passed this marker. So we now inside a sink inside this port here. Yeah. There's another marker and then a lot of ferries. So we need to also negotiate between these ferries and we were approaching this big one on the port side so we had to let it go let it go past us on its way but it just turned right next to us just a little bit more green we've not seen that ro rock on the chart okay so there there is the rock but look if you zoom out, just then it disappears. There's a buoy in a place like those things there, but it doesn't say rock. This little bay here reminds me of the bay close to Cape Town, Clifton. You also go and anchor between the rocks, and then there's a small little beach. Here's a, here's a couple of small beaches. There's one and there's one. It's behind these boulders. So this is Italy. And over there is Corsica, France. So we are on our way to France. 